you said uh, that when interviewed that uh, the crime you committed was due to underlying situations. What, what were those underlying situations? The toxic relationship that I was in and the stress that I felt from realizing that I was in a situation that I couldn't control. Okay. So you were in a, what you describe as an unhealthy relationship with the mother of the children and yes, your way of dealing with that was actually violating these young girls? Yeah, that was, that's, it's not an excuse, but that was the result. No, that was the choice you made. And this hearing only gets worse. And if you can imagine that he was only just sentenced on 8-31-2023, a year ago at the time of his hearing, and that he only has a six-year sentence, a maximum release date of 2027. But hey, they're just children, so who cares, right? I'll unpack it with the details at the end. Jordan Trent, 421-300. This hearing is being conducted in consideration of the parole application for Jordan Trent and May number 421-300. He is serving a sentence of 20 years jail, six years to serve, followed by 20 years of probation for two counts of illegal sexual contact with the victim under 13. As of today, records reflect a parole eligibility date of June 6, 2024. There is no victim input in this case. There is an offender accountability plan for the offender. It has been reviewed. It shows the offender has completed the following programs, short track sex treatment program and domestic violence program. Utilizing the statewide collaborative offender risk evaluation system, the offender's overall score falls within the high grade of risk for risk utilization. If Utilizing the static 99R, the offender's overall score for sexual offense um, recidivism falls within the low range. Mr. Trent, this is your opportunity to express to the board why you believe you should be granted parole. You may begin. I, I thank you very much for giving me the chance to speak. I very much understand this is a privilege, so I also thank you for the chance to prove myself worthy for the long chance, for the chance of having a long road of redemption laid out of me as a free man, God willing. Long before it being locked up for my actions, I found myself in a state of self-loathing, contempt even. I understand my actions were vile and I hated that I let an anger from my situations make things so much worse for others. I didn't see how it was possible until I haven't taken these classes and haven't reflected on everything. Now I see how a string of situations and my feelings led to actions that should have never happened in the first place. I wish every day that I could undo it all. But sadly, all I can do is be sure that all I can do to make sure it's never possible again is continued treatment once I'm out. I have a great support system around me that I'm blessed with. I have many things to keep me busy with work once I am to be released, as well as three business ideas, one of which I'm currently putting together already. I'm highly motivated to be accomplished and be the best father possible for my children, which currently desperately need me. So I humbly beg for you the chance to prove myself sooner rather than later. Again, thank you for this chance to speak. Thank you very much, Mr. Trent, for your opening statement. Um, I appreciate your taking the time out to uh, write down your thoughts. And I mean, I heard you talk about your children who desperately need you. Isn't one of your children a victim? No, no. Okay, so you have one daughter that's older, right? An adult? Yes. So yes. what other children are you referring to? My other child was just recently born during my incarceration. And how old is that child? She is two years, nine months now. So we're going to take some turns asking you questions. When we're done, we will deliberate and give you our decision. Um, uh, Ms. Turner, we'll start with the questions. So Mr. Trent, um, I know that you haven't taken the voices program, um, but I didn't hear you say anything about the victims of your crime. I definitely acknowledge the damage that my crime has inflicted on others. I shortly excerpted that in the, in the letter that I've written, but I, I definitely understand how the classes, the damage that has been done, and the fact that I have to live with that. Okay, and so try to redeem uh, myself as well as the victims have to live with that. What do you think the damage was? 
mental mental misplacement of trust from my actions as well as having to deal with the memories for the rest of our lives. So that's trauma? Yes, ma'am. Flashbacks, anxiety, probably some self-harm involved because you're trying to, at a, you know, still young age, figure out what happened to them. Yes, ma'am. You know, it's like crimes that have no real explanation other than, you know, the selfishness of the perpetrator. So in court, you declared your innocence. So now you are taking responsibility for your crimes? Yes, ma'am. I declared my innocence against the, the nature in which the crimes were divulged. It wasn't to that extent, but I am definitely doing all that I can, I've taken these classes, I've admitted to my actions as far as my recent review before this hearing, what my what my actions were. So let me just see if I've got all the facts correct. So you were on probation at the time you uh, violated these two children, ages eight and 10. Uh, you were uh, on probation for strangulation, unlawful restraint and threatening. No. And for that, you've taken the domestic violence program? I was and not on probation at the time of the offenses. That was the domestic that? happened, and then I came out and was on probation. Yeah, you had three years of probation for the 2017 strangulation for which you served six months. Right, and I immediately, I never went back to the house after I was released. Okay. So while you were... Um, committing acts of domestic violence against the children's mother, that's when you were also violating the girls and telling them uh, that if uh, you were, that you doing this to them kept you from hitting their mother. That was never the case. The domestic situation only happened one time and there was only one incident of that. There was never any priors to that. And that's why I left the house after being released. So you didn't coerce the children uh, with the uh, sexual offenses uh, by telling them doing that to them kept you from hitting their mom? No, ma'am. So they just made that up? I believe so, yes. Oh, huh. okay. So um, you said uh, that when interviewed that uh, the crime you committed was due to underlying situations. What, what were those underlying situations? The toxic relationship that I was in and the stress that I felt from realizing that I was in a situation that I couldn't control. Okay. So you were in a, what you described as an unhealthy relationship with the mother of the children and yes, your way of dealing with that was was sexually violating these young girls. Yeah, that was that's it's not an excuse, but that was a result. No, that was a choice you made. Because any other that was a choice you made. Because any that other reasonable yes. thinking person right. in a relationship that they found to be unhealthy would remove themselves from the relationship. Correct. Not choose to cope by sexually violating prepubescent children. I agree. So you have three standing criminal protective orders against you. Tell me what you understand that means. No contact at all. But not through a third party, no not through, a third through party social at media, all. not, not at friending all. them, okay. So why would you choose while incarcerated to make Pruno to sell to other inmates? I was, I was being idiotic. I was desperate for having something extra to eat. And at, at, the, idea, at the time, I thought the idea wouldn't be that bad of a situation. And it turned out that it was very idiotic. Well, 
it's beyond that, sir. It's destructive because there are actually people there in the facility who are working to address their own addiction to substances. And by producing and circulating Pruno, you are undermining the recovery of potentially dozens of people there in the, in the prison. So you get a class A contraband ticket in March of 2022, and you do the same damn thing in May of 2023. You probably did it throughout that whole period, but you got caught again in May yes, of 2023. Ma'am. Yes, ma'am. The second, second time was, it was for myself, but it doesn't excuse the behavior. No, it doesn't. So um, by the looks of it, uh, you need an addiction services program, um, especially if you're making Pruno to cope with being in prison. Um, you should probably take a fatherhood program if you're going to have hope to have any contact with your daughter when you're out of prison and on the sex offender registry for 10 years. And you, you clearly need the voices program. So I hope you'll make the most of the time remaining before you go out to 20 years of probation, 10 years on the sex offender registry, and abide by the uh, standing criminal protective orders against you. But I'm interested to hear what my colleagues have to say. Thank you, Ms. Turner. Ms. Palmieri? So, Mr. Trent, I just have a couple of follow-ups. So, on the evaluation for the domestic violence program, you said that some, but you stated in group that some of the domestic violence didn't apply to you. What did you mean by that? Some of what was discussed in the group, what? A lot of the things that were being discussed as far as the brutality that was being done, which we were doing in a lot of the classes that we were going through, I, 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 I did not agree with at all for some fact of I've never, I've never reached that level. Okay. So I, I disagree with a lot of what was being implied as to my reason for taking the class. Did you find any of the class useful, helpful? Yes, yes. I learned a lot of, um, cognitive distorted thinking and how being very selfish can lead to the aspect of not considering another's feelings, whether it's yelling, arguing, screaming, getting physical, and how to remove yourself from a situation once you start feeling you're getting towards that. Did you, were you able to see yourself as being a person committing domestic violence? Yes, I was able to see, see the victim's point of view. I was able to understand the, the, the verbal, especially the verbal aspect of when I, when I would get mad and the things that I would say. And then my other question to you is, you made a comment and I'm not 100% sure where I read it, that the children may or may not have seen things on your phone. What did you mean by that? I was very careless with my phone a lot of the time. And I would, I would be on my phone looking at solicited things and I would get up absolutely leave my phone alone. Sometimes I would come back, I wouldn't remember if it was on the screen still or not, but there were times where they would have my phone after I left the room, came back in, and then they're on games. So were there inappropriate things on your phone that the children should not have been witnessing? And they were very well, probably more than likely that was the case. Thank you, Mr. Trent. I can see the there. Thank you, Ms. Palmieri. Um, give us a few minutes to talk about your case, Mr. Trent. Um, I, you know, I have to be honest and say that what you're saying here today is completely different than what I've read. Um, when the officer asked you about your responsibility for your case, you told him that you disagreed with it. 
and that you just hopped out to the charges. But now today you're saying, even it's almost like you're removed from the situation. I feel so, I, I'm remorseful for the situation or something you said. Um, so it's concerning to me. But give us a few minutes to talk about your case, sir, and we will give you all the decision. Go ahead, Mr. Um, Mr. Trent, so you sit here today and you are accepting responsibility for the harm you caused these young children in violating them sexually? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so when are you going to tell your mother that you did commit these crimes? My mother knows. Oh, okay. When did you tell her? I told her right after realizing that I need the help. When, to when was that? While you were inside? Yes. In, in prison? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Because she was supporting you so strongly before you were sentenced and absolutely certain that you did not do the things that you were charged with. So, it, you know, she's going to continue to be part of your support network and also perhaps a connection to other children in your life, she needs to be aware that you actually did harm these children. Okay. I understand. Upon taking the class, there was a there was a moment in which I had I even relayed this in class that everyone now knows and everyone has decided to stand by me because they see that I'm trying to do something about it. Aren't you fortunate for that? Um, so um, on to deliberations. Um, so Mr. Trent um, has a criminal history that involves uh, convictions in Georgia um, and uh, domestic violence. He's got the sex offender registry, standing criminal protective orders against him and 20 years of uh, probation ahead of him. Um, so I think, as I pointed out, there are plenty of programs he can avail himself of while he continues with this period of incarceration to prepare him to be successful when he's back out in the community. Um, you know, the, um, the fact that he was uh, doing the things he was doing to harm children um, with the, you know, unbelievable justification of the you know, toxic relationship and then coming into prison and manufacturing Pruno to, you know, to get money on his commissary account. It's just insane. So it's a no for me. Thank you, Ms. Turner. Ms. Palmieri. I, I also uh, do not find Mr. Trent suitable for appeal today. The, the, Ms. Palmieri reports the nature and circumstance of the events for the partial responsibility for the offense. And as you pointed out earlier, his version is, is varies from what the actual documents provide. Okay. Um, all right. So the reasons for denial are inadequate evidence of offender shame. Oh, hold on. Uh, nature and circumstance. Yeah. Offense on probation. Yeah. Poor institutional adjustment. Yeah. Inadequate evidence of offender change. Yeah. And I had inadequate release plan. With uh, regard to Jordan Trent 421300, I move that his request for discretionary parole be denied for the following reasons. There's inadequate evidence of offender change. You have an inadequate release plan. You're, the nature and circumstance of your offenses were committed while they were on probation and your poor institutional adjustment as evidenced by the disciplinary infractions. You will not receive a new hearing. I just want to acknowledge for the record that your mother did submit a support letter on your behalf. Is there a second to the motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. All right, Mr. Trent, you will receive all of this in writing. Um, we wish you the best of luck, sir. Thank you. This concludes the hearing for Jordan Trent. Let's rehash the insanity of what we just heard. Yes, thankfully, the parole board, they did their job in this scenario. So we can't blame them. He was denied. He's not getting a rehearing. But the bottom line fact is the system, the DA, the judge, they agreed to a sentence that will result in this man getting out 
on his full term date. It's not a, a good time date. He can continue to mess up in prison as long as he doesn't pick up any new felonies. He's getting out on June 7, 2027. Oh, I can guarantee you they they if the if if the moment arose, the DA would have issued a press release. We sentenced him to 20 years because that's what a sentence is. But 14 years is suspended. He's his maximum release date allows it so that he will be getting out in three years from the time of this hearing. Now make this make sense. He only has to register for 10 years. Why? Why? What? So you do that to an eight-year-old? You do that to a 10-year-old? Your stepdaughters? And you only have to register for 10 years? What? Let's, let's add another layer of insult to injury. The risk assessment score He's, he's categorized as low risk. Now, he's categorized as high risk for offending against people. But when it comes to children, the algorithmic PhD brilliant 10 point questionnaire that they put together, which is universally used across the 50 states, that puts him at a low risk. Because surely someone who does that to an 8-year-old and a 10-year-old, and the reason is because they felt like they were losing control in their relationship, surely he, surely there's no pedophiliac tendencies. There's no, you know, I, there's no way he would do it again. It's just a low chance. What the hell is wrong with this system? We heard the DA gives him a deal. They allow him to sign off on a deal. And even then, when he's signing on the deal, they're allowing him to proclaim his innocence. You heard the board. He said, they said, oh, well, when you took the deal, you were claiming that they were all lying, that they made it up. So, so it, it, picture this. You're a DA. You have in front of you a dangerous man who is out on probation because he got probation for strangulation and violating a protective order. And um, and it, the list goes, he's on probation. He now violates that probation. He's sitting in front of you in the courtroom. I mean, you, you can, j just from that probation that he was on, I'm looking over from what Richard sent, which was June 27, 2017, he had a one-year jail sentence suspended, probation three years for strangulation, one-year jail, jail execution suspended after six months um, for count three of unlawful second restraint, one-year jail executed suspend, suspended probation three years for threatening, and one-year jail executed suspended probation for, for threatening violation of probation was unterminated. That's four years of jail, my understanding, if I understand the law correctly, that would have been hanging over his head just for violating that probation. You could have locked him up for four years without even adding any new charges. And then the DA said, you know what? What This is a great deal for us. We, you know, we're holding the, it's, it's a two children, eight years old, 10 years old, his stepdaughters. He's denying his, his guilt. He's insisting he's innocent, but we'll give him a 20-year deal suspended after 14, so he he's only has to serve six, the maximum. He might get paroled after a year. And he only needs to register for 10 years. While he's in prison, he's making Pruno two write-ups for that. And he has a low risk score. He says, I need to get out because I have a child. Can you imagine that? A daughter. They even say that you should take a parenting class if you're going to have a relationship with your 
so, with your daughter with I He, he, there's nothing there. There's no empathy. There's no regret. There's not he, even in his in his statement. He says, "I, uh, I, <laughs> yes, I, I've what was the words? Uh, you know, he caught himself. He he fixed it at the end. But uh, I have to deal with this. I have to live with this. Oh, oh, they do too. I mean, can, can we not forget? We're talking about eight and ten years old. Why?" Is he getting a plea deal to be released into the streets to do this again? Why, you know, and if you want to say, well, they couldn't put the kids on the stand. It was impossible. It was his words against there. They were going to go to a jury trial. They're so overwhelmed. The court, the backup, the this, that. So then why, why give him a 10-year registry? Why not make it 20 years? Why not make it life? Why agree to those terms? Now, maybe there's legislation where they can't put them away for that many years and put them on, uh, on a higher registry. Maybe if someone knows, put it in the comment section. Or more likely, it's because they're weak and they're pathetic. And they think no one's watching and they just want to get this off of their dockets and they want to get a win and they want to tell everybody that they're locking away sex offenders. And believe me, you, me, when they tell someone, they'll say that they gave them a 20 year sentence and it's all for show. It's all fake because they actually don't care. With that, I'll let you go.